One of the uh, highlights of this year's uh, Melbourne Documentary Film Festival, screening in July, is a film called How Are You Travelling? And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the director of the film, Craig Elder, and to one of the people in the film, Susan Jury. Welcome to Movie Metropolis. Great to be here. Thank you for um, uh, having us on board for this chat. Absolutely. Hi, Good to Hello. Good to talk to you. Now, this is such an interesting film, uh, especially the idea of Sykes on bikes. I, th I thought that was uh, a, a really interesting uh, sort of concept. T tell me about the origins of making this uh, documentary. Well, it's a good question. Um, it sort of started, as all things, quite organically, where it's sort of uh, my, wa my wife, Susan, which is who uh, we're chatting to here, who's one of the Sykes on bikes, She's been riding with Sykes on bikes for many years and um, it sort of, um, they came up with this crazy idea that they would try and travel around Australia during the pandemic, which would probably seem an unlikely ambition at the time. Um, considering we couldn't really go travel 5Ks beyond where we were living. <laughs> so, um, but I was I felt very compelled to, to uh, jump on board I just had this real sense that this needed to be filmed and so I was kind of introduced to Joe Dunn who's the um, the original founder of Sykes on Bikes and next thing you know we're sort of one thing leads to another and I'm, I've, I've teamed up with a with another filmmaker Jerome Pelletier um, from Stepping Stone Films and uh, we're jumping on a plane to Mount Isa with our cameras and <laughs> heading into the outback. That's the short version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what an interesting concept. But uh, so tell me about the filming process because uh, traveling around the outback areas and uh, visiting people and, and talking about mental health issues, etc., su such an important issue. Um, what were the challenges that you and Susan uh, faced in uh, in all of this? Well, it, the big challenge from a filmmaking point of view was following, uh, I think it was about 30 different motorbike riders um, who, motorbike riders are a lot faster than we had a, a, a kind of chase of vehicle. And so it was logistically difficult to kind of try and catch up, stay, catch up, you know, actually stay with them because their motorbikes are a lot quicker than a car and and also just figuring out how the hell we tell these stories with the people that we meet on the way um so it was it was how we we kind of did it it was a mix of actually you know kind of fly on the wall style we were actually just filming things as we went along and picked up the stories and combined with a few things that we actually kind of set up uh, and we, we kind of researched and found certain stories like in mount isa we had this chap Tonka, who was working in the in the mines, and he had a lot of mental health issues, and he, he'd kind of he, he's in the documentary, so I won't say too much. But um, yeah, there was a bit of a mix of fly on the wall and sort of produced, researched um, storylines that we followed and set up. But mostly it was see your pants sort of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so it, it was not too difficult to find people to talk to uh, or did they have some issues with the cameras being there and so on? Well, that's probably, I should probably get Susan to explain a little bit about how Sykes on Bikes actually works. Yep. Um, bec yeah, because they're a, bit of, they're a unique um, group, you know, they... they where they, they travel on their bikes and, and you know, into these communities and mm. provide these health checks. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Susan to explain. <laughs> okay, Susan. Thank you. So I, get, I guess from um, the motorbikers' point of view is that we're a funny bunch because we all work in mental health or a um, derivative of that. And so by nature we're communicators and like to communicate with people. But at the same time riding motorbikes, we're loners in a way and um get great satisfaction and it's good for our mental health being on the bike for so many hours so i think that craig and jerome did a pretty excellent job at getting us on board through trust and time and trusting 
we, we, we kind of increased our trust around the camera and to be filmed. And I guess from a perspective of the people we went to see, you were asking about engaging them with the documentary. And because it was, as Craig says, as we went, it just was about building the trust with them and then very, very quickly just rolling with it, seeing that we're having fun, seeing that we're there for good reasons. And as a result, from my perspective, we met some absolutely incredible people and you'll see them in the documentary. You see another side of Australia that honestly most people who live in the cities have no idea that this is Australia. And it's very humbling actually when you come from the city to these places. And um, Craig and Jeremy just capture those people beautifully in the documentary. Um, um, and I guess that just comes from it happening, happening so quick and building their trust within seconds of meeting them. Well, congratulations on that because it is uh, it is so interesting to observe, uh, especially in in rural outback sort of uh, aspects or parts of Australia, um, how mental health issues are issues that need to be discussed and dealt with, and uh, and that uh, this uh, uh, group, uh, um, Sykes on Bikes, and this film will assist very much in raising that issue. I think to uh, uh, public prominence. Um, yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, I mean, I had, I have never been on a ride before. So just seeing, seeing as a filmmaker, seeing Sykes on bikes, you know, going into the, on the, riding in the, on their bikes and the, the bikes were a real icebreaker into these communities. And so it was kind of a way of, you know, breaking down the, the walls and it's, it, it, it sort of started the conversation. And so, yeah, and it, it sort of, for the first time, a lot of these people um, hadn't really had a chat with a mental health professional. And so it sort of helped to destigmatize the whole mental health. You know, mental health is st still very stigmatized, mm. um, especially in these, these, these um, remote communities um, where services are pretty well zero in some places. So, mm. you know, the process of learning to talk about you know, your emotions and the, and the language of mental health is something that, you know, we all learn, need to learn, really. You know, we're, I think we're all not that great at it, at sharing what's actually going on in, inside for ourselves, you know. And, and that witnessing the, the process of um, Sykes on Bikes talking to these people through, you know, these head, they do a health check first, a body check, I should, I should say, and then they do move on to a head check and they, and they go through, it's a quite a, systematic process where they sort of go through a journey and a, and a, and a chat with these people and, and unpack what's going on for them. And, and it was really amazing the transformation that happened to some of these people who just were able to sit down and talk, and, you know, just that simple process of talking and sharing what's going on for them. You know, that, uh, and as a filmmaker, it was, um, it was, it was really uh, a special thing to be able to capture that. And hence the, the title, How Are You Travelling, as an opening line for uh, uh, an introduction to people saying, well, how are you travelling? How are things going? <laughs> well, exactly. It's, tr it's true, yeah. And like Craig was mentioning just now, um, Dr. Joe Dunn's the founder of Sykes and Bikes. He's a psychiatrist based in Sydney. And when he first founded Sykes and Bikes back in 2011, with his brother, um, he was riding across the Malibu, and he suddenly thought, "Surely we can combine this with, um, you know, with my my professional and personal interests." And one of his philosophies has always been to go to the people, and that's very evident in the documentary because we're not expecting people to come to a clinic to talk about their mental health. We're going to them, and that was the first step, I think, in breaking down some of that stigma and just creating some conversation and language around it. And I guess helping people to have some ideas and insight into how to support each other and how to help each other in these places where it's very, very difficult to access mental health. Um, we go to an Indigenous school in, um, in Elliot, in one, of, in one of the small communities. We go to um, several stations um, where the, the, they're hours away from any kind of access to any kind of services or help, um, and where the, the people have been affected by bushfires, by droughts, by a whole lot of things, by suicide, youth suicide, and um, by going to them, that's the first step in opening those conversations and helping people to feel just a little bit more um, 
uh, I guess, safe to talk about things. And like you see in the documentary, how they say that's just that, that they didn't even realize the benefit until they had that experience. Absolutely, I can see the strong benefits of uh, this uh, program and uh, of visiting people in in their own environments and uh, and uh, talking to them about their mental health issues. Susan, I remember when I saw the documentary. Did you have a, a sort of a a difficulty with your motorbike? <laughs> well noted, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so put it this way: I travelled the. Um, uh, circumference of Australia, but the motorbike didn't. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I so you'll, you'll very, have, very quickly. Oh, go ahead, Craig. You'll have, to watch the, you'll have to watch the documentary to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was getting quite concerned. There. Thing, there is a spoiler because we know I'm, I'm alive to tell the story, right? So, there's a small spoiler already. <laughs> Spoiler alert, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, you're traveling long distances, and uh, and I can imagine rough uh, uh, areas and so on that uh, things will happen, and bikes are not necessarily all going to be very um, uh, helpful uh, in uh, negotiating some of those difficult areas. Yeah, I mean, you can blame the bike. You can blame the bike. You can blame the rider. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <but> <laughs> But, um, yeah, sure enough, I mean, um, as, as I guess as Craig says, you'll see it in the documentary, but yeah. um, it certainly made for um, a, a, an added little story, didn't it? I mean, Craig was probably very concerned about his wife on one hand and very excited for his documentary making <laughs> on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a fine line where, you know, I was like, <laughs> how far do I, um, you know, document my wife um, coming off the motorbike? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, that, that's it, what's called the deleted yeah. scenes, I suppose. But but anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway she, she lives to she lived to tell the story, which, which I'm yeah. very pleased to see. That's that's yeah. great news. Now, have the communities that you've visited in making this film, uh, have they seen this film? To be honest, they uh, have an an really seen it in its full um in the full way we've still because we've only really just rolling it out now um um originally the program was the whole concept which I, my my feeling is this would make an excellent tv series like an ongoing tv series a bit like back roads hmm. um and so the intention for this documentary was to be a pilot to to demonstrate really that this is um, uh, a program that would have a lot of value in terms of, you know, the, the, the adventure you've got. It's like the long way down, you know, long way around um, the series, um, that which is, you know, bike, motorbikes and travel. Um, and you've got the, the so you've got a, you know, outdoors, you know, you've got the out, outback, you've got motorbikes, you've got mental health. So you've got a lot of themes there that I think would actually translate into an, an ongoing mm. TV series. So that's the intention still. So we're still still hoping that that's something that that um, uh, from from this exposure, you know, hopefully at the um, Melbourne Documentary Film Festival, that people will will, will kind of um, give us. Um, we're hoping to get to learn from that, you know, to see what sort of reaction we get, and uh, hopefully someone's going to come along with a big bag of money and go, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> that that would be very nice, but uh, but I certainly can see how this could be a series uh, on on TV. It it, it would make uh, a lot of sense, or even on streaming services or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I can see. So you mentioned, did you use more than one camera? Did you have much production support behind you to be able to make the film? Well, the short answer is uh, we. It was an absolute shoestring budget, and re it was filmed by myself and another um, uh, cameraman, DOP Jerome. He, he, him, and I basically did the filming. So we did two cameras. We did everything, you know, the sound and the filming and drone, dro drone, mm. um, and um, and I've done all the post producing and the editing and um, the writing even. So, geez, it's a uh, um, but. Um, I think, you know, uh, the result I'm really happy with, we're getting really good feedback. People seem to really love it. It's got a, 
um, I think we've captured a really special time, you know, and uh, I um, feel very, um, you know, honoured to have been able to join these guys on their journey and capture that. So, yeah, it was a special thing for me personally. Oh, well, congratulations yeah. on that. It, it, yeah, it, it certainly is very effective in that respect. Uh, so uh, with all of that in mind, tell me about the editing process because uh, documentary filmmaking is uh, um, most difficult perhaps sometimes when you go yeah. to the editing and you decide what stays in and what goes out of the final version. Yeah, well, it was fortunately, um, you know, we kind of were reasonably organised as we were going. So we kind of, we're quite um, clear on the stories that we, we we were creating, but there was a lot of bits and pieces that we were just, you know, making it up as we were going. And, you know, we were literally just stories would present themselves, people would present themselves, and we were literally just, you know, like we were at the um, Daily Waters pub and they were doing a... Uh, uh, having a uh, doing a health check with um, a cattle station there, and then we met through that the health check. We met um, a fam, a, a, one of the some people, uh, uh, this young woman who had to deal with uh, the loss of her partner, and he, she just came forward and talked about that experience for her, for her, and that you know. So there were some really raw, special moments that just popped out of nowhere um, that we you just can't plan for. And uh, so stitching those together in the edit were a bit difficult because we would sort of literally like, you know, in terms of telling a, a visual story, we were sort of um, able to interview that person, but, you know, didn't have a lot of um, preparation in terms of the, the visual overlay that we would need to, to kind of go with it. So we had to be really fleet footed in terms of how we, we kind of um, gathered images and told those stories. So, yeah, but I think the result, Hopefully, we'll know what people think of it. But I, so, but I think I think it, the process was quite a blend of um, well planned and um, completely um, random, which was yeah, you know, so it, as a result, it, I think it's uh, come together really well, though. Yes, yes. Would you no. call that well planned and well winged? Uh, yeah, it was kind of organised chaos, really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Susan, being a psychologist, I suppose you have to find the right ways to communicate with uh, people who are uh, in mental health situations, finding uh, the right language, I suppose, and uh, and not being judgmental or not being, um, uh, I suppose, problematic and making their situation worse. This is true. I'm a nurse, not a psychologist. Ah. And... Um, and you're absolutely right. But at the end of the day, it's about having conversations. And one of the um, one of my colleagues who was on the ride with us, as he said, first of all, he's a motorbike rider, and second, he works in mental health. So it's uh, a lot of this is about being people together. And yes, yeah, you're putting a bit of language and proper conversations into that. But the first connection is as people. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, being a, okay, being a nurse. So, so that's yeah, that's great. So. Uh... All right. So now the film will be screening at uh, in July, of course, at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival, which is great. Will the film be screened anywhere else? Um, look, we've got it entered into a few other festivals where, that we're um, hoping for that, that to be accepted. Um, we are pitching it to a few of the uh, networks. Um, so at the moment, yeah, this is this is our kind of first. This is a premiere, so um, this is the first time we've rolled it out. So, yeah, hoping people are going to get along and and uh, watch it. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure they will, actually. It, um, I think it's a, a really interesting topic and uh, very well filmed. So apart from the potential uh, TV series or whatever that you're hoping will come from uh, this, uh, this uh, documentary film, are you also looking at uh, making any other films? Well, at the moment, I'm, I'm actually doing working for... Um, um, the ABC working for uh, Fremantle Media doing a, another series, TV series. So my hands are a bit tired at the moment, but uh -huh. um, 
<clears throat> I'd love this to come to life and to be able to take on the project of actually doing a TV series about Sykes on Bikes and their adventures, you know, and, and go like, um, they've already like recently, Susan will probably tell you a bit more about their recent trip to Tasmania, which they went down there and did a, a big trip right around Tassie ah. and, um, you know, did a similar thing. And so that would have been absolutely fantastic to, to have um, filmed as well. So there's all these opportunities that are presenting uh, in terms of you know that's so that's that's what I truly would love to be able to do from here. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Well, Susan, do you want to talk about that uh, Tasmanian trip? Yeah. So we spent ten days um, going the loop of Tasmania, and we um, we paired up with um, uh, mental health providers and um, rural alive and well raw down in Tasmania, and they hosted us in a few different sites where we um, did the same thing, really, um, the body checks and then the head checks, chatting to people um, and checking in with people. It's something we do, on average, we do one big ride a year. This year, we've got another one coming up, up to the Orange region and to rural New South Wales. And then we also do some smaller ones, like we um, have been approached by um, the Red Cross um, about visiting a couple of regional communities in Victoria where they've really fallen by the wayside with the post bushfire relief. Um, last year, early last year, we went out to Toomba um as well, also in rural New South Wales. So we are responsive as well to communities that feel they wouldn't, they'd benefit from our presence um, and for all of their community, but obviously in particular for their men. So it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing adventure and excursion, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And is it mainly men who are the who are the uh, the subject of um, uh, who you talk to and, and so on? We talk we talk to absolutely anybody, um, yeah. adults. But originally, when Joe Dunn sent this up, and when we first started our rides, the focus really was men because suicide rates in men are significantly higher than for yeah. women. Um, and so we recognise this and also the um, men's access to mental health services is significantly lower. Um, so we saw this gap in motor motorbikes, like cars, you know, um, it's an easy, common way to get in and to connect. Mm. Um, but in the, I guess in the past two or three or so years, we've become a lot more open to just a general how you're travelling for anybody. That sounds great. And you're back on your bike. I most definitely am. I just got off it to talk to you, actually. <laughs> yeah, I got I, back on the horse, well and truly. Uh, back on the horse, the uh, horsepower. Uh, excellent news yeah. to, to hear that, Susan. Well, Craig and Susan, congratulations on the film. Uh, we've been speaking to Craig Elder, the director, and Susan Jury, nurse who's part of um, Sykes on Bikes, and the film is How Are You Travelling, screening as part of the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. Thank you so much, both of you, for talking with me. Thank you, too. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having us. All the best. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.